What does that feel like? Oh, very badly. Just like Africans feel very badly about being colonized or uh, Indian or Pakistanis at that time. Can you give me an example? Everything was under the control in the economic world of English-speaking pe people not speaking a word of French. Uh, and it's, it was not only a matter of language, it was a matter of ethnicity, if I may say. That was the, the rule of that time. Um, we were told in Maya, in the 60s, in a, a great store like uh, Heaton, speak white. Speak white, that means speak English. That means that all the non-English speakers were rather inferior people. Uh, so it was very stimulating for us. In what Shame. way? What, did it uh, make you feel angry, frustrated? Angry, frustrated, but determined to change the situation. Mm -hmm. we, were not, uh, we were not crushed by that. We were stimulated to change it. Uh, when I say we, uh, it applies generally to the Quebec population. It was the time of the Quiet Revolution. This is post uh, Maurice de, de, de Plessis. Exactly. And it was uh, led by men like Jean Lesage, uh, René Lévesque, uh, Pierre Laporte, Eric Kierens, and others. And the motto of Lesage to be elected was Maître chez nous, master in our own house. That means the time of decolonization was there. And uh, it started all a process. Cultural, economic, I would say even psychological, to have the Quebec nation more and more in charge of its own uh, destiny. When when we see Quebecois, mm -hmm. many people think of well, they're French. Is there a difference between the French and the Quebecois? Huge difference. <laughs> like we, we speak French, but we are deeply North American people. We are ro rooted in that continent, um, like the Mexicans are not Spanish. <laughs> There's a great difference between Latin American and Spanish people or Portuguese. Same thing. Um, and I would say in the best hypothesis that Quebec, that Quebec is a sort of synthesis between Europe and North America uh, in terms of uh, way of life, quality of life. Uh, food, uh, love relations, and so on, a relation to music, literature, poetry. Uh, if you have a poll uh, in Toronto and in Montreal, usually the results of Montreal are closer of those for the same question in London or in Paris. And Toronto is closer for, from uh, New York City or Detroit. Mm -hmm. So it's, uh, it's, it's fundamental differences. And that's why Quebec, since centuries, is a nation. What, what is a nation? It's a group of human beings uh, with a common past, uh, good adventures and bad ones, dreams, plan for the future usually a common language, and today virtually no more ethnically related. Uh, Quebec is a mixture ethnically since years. Uh, they say that close to one quarter of the Quebec people has Irish roots. Mm -hmm. In fact, six of our prime ministers, including Jean Charest, have close Irish roots. Uh, French uh, colonizers here mix with the Amerindians more than any other. Mm -hmm. So anthropologists are saying that a majority of Quebecers has Amerindian roots or, or blood in a sense or another. So the Quebec nation is not an ethnic nation, it's a real one, it's sociological, uh, open, bon, one thing to keep is identity. The, yeah, the sovereign or separatist movement, did it exist in Quebec 
in the 1800s and in the early 1900s? Yes, but I would say marginally. Can, you, can you explain that marginally? Historically rooted. The founder of the Liberal Party of Quebec was Honoré Mercier, mm -hmm. end of the 19th century. He called this party Le Parti National, the National Party, and came close after the real uh, assassination or execution in the West to declare Quebec independence. Because he said, Riel, our brother, he was the leader of the Mythist, was killed and it created great turmoil in Quebec, and we came close to independence at that time. But after that, uh, with the participation of some very famous Quebecers in the Canadian adventure, Wilfrid Laurier, uh, Louis Saint Laurent, uh, and some others, the independentist movement was rather uh, sleeping, mm -hmm. but was present. In the 60s, Pierre Bourgo, who founded the Rassemblement pour l'Independence Nationale, was already an important Quebec thinker and influencing the opinion. But globally, the movement was marginal, two or three percent of support. Okay. But years after years, it came to 1995, 50 percent of support. Okay. And what was the turning point of that? Was it because of the universities? Was it because of the intellectuals? The, the level of education was a turning point of the Quiet Revolution for that matter and many others. If Quebec is very powerful economically today, if we have Bombardier, uh, Lavalin, uh, Cascade, uh, Le Cirque du Soleil and all the others, it's because our level of education in the 60s was one of the lowest in the developed countries and today is one of the highest. So you have the explanation for that and for the movement of independence, same thing. Okay, we have to take a short break, Mr. Landry, and okay. we'll be right back.